equal line. Queen's Park Rangers three, Newcastle United nil, Newcastle in third, and they were three nil down after just 18 minutes of that match. Two of the goals coming from Les Ferdinand. But we'll concentrate on uh, the soccer, of course, in final score from 4.40 onwards. Let's take you now to highlights from Murrayfield this afternoon. Scotland against Ireland. We'll show you the uh, Scotland team first of all with Captain Gavin Hastings making history today by winning his 53rd cap, a new Scottish record. And Scotland's victory over Canada a fortnight ago was their first win in 10 matches and the selectors have named an unchanged lineup to face Ireland. It means that Gregor Townsend is preferred again to Gavin's brother Scott Hastings at outside centre and lock Damien Cronin Try scorer against Canada wins his 31st cap. The Irish side that shows six changes, one positional from the side beaten 28 by England in Dublin. The only new cap is 26 year old Ben Cronin at number eight. Paddy John switches to lock in a new look second row partnership with Gabriel Fulcher, who replay England. Dennis McBride returns at open side flanker in place of David Corkery. Jonathan Bell replaces Niall Woods on the left wing, and Captain Michael Bradley plays at scrum half instead of Niall Hogan. The Royal Bank of Scotland International will go into the record books with Gavin Hastings' name alongside it, but the result was far more important to him. Well, Ireland have already missed a penalty as we join our commentators, Philip Matthews and Bill McLean. It really is a lovely day for rugby football. We should see some handling here. Now we can see Keith Wood standing under the Irish line out of a, a pseudo scrum half position, so to speak. Well taken by Fulcher. That's the Irish 22. Bradley finds his man well. So Paul Buckley, the 21-year-old schoolmaster down at the uh, Christian Brothers College in Cork. The referee Derek Bevan is warning the players not to jump across. Very good jump indeed there by Cronin. Ian Jardin takes it in shot. Now it's Wayne Wright. Well to Morrison. Scottish breakaways featuring well there. They've retidied it, but that was a lovely wedge and drive by the Irish forward. However, the breakaway on there to Hilton. Red path. Back inside. Cronin driving. Now it's red path again, a real chance here for the drop goal attempt. Townsend with the drop goal attempt, but Ireland caught offside. Uh, certainly the Scottish pack starting to put a few passes together. Interesting note, a slight change in style uh, over the last couple of years from the, the traditional Scottish rocking style game. The Scottish boards are now trying to keep the game in the hands an awful lot more, and you can see Rob Wainwright, Ian Morrison combining when he went very well to set up that chance for a drop goal by Gregor Townsend. So the captain himself, 488 points. That includes 10 tries, by the way, which uh, equals the uh, Scottish record for a fullback held by Andy Irvin. Gavin Hastings. Yes, those are uh, as we can drink to the Scottish skipper, three points to nil. They've played just over five minutes. Scotland's 22. Keith Wood also off the Gary Owen club, but Cronin got fingers to it at the front. Brian Bedpath had to take it in. It's really a day, Philip, for catching with two hands at the line-out. Very much, very much so. I mean, normally, Ireland-Scotland games are very, very physical, frenetic encounters. Uh, but today, we can't, no side can afford to be tapping ball back on, even though the conditions uh, underfoot and to hand are very good. The ball needs to be tidy because both sides want to play the game at a frenetic, fast pace and get it amongst the opposition. Well, here, if you watch here, Scotland were penalised just about here. And... Uh, I believe it was for Damien Cronin giving some guidance to the referee. And Clayton Thomas, the touch judge, uh, actually came across and gave the referee a bit of help as well. And the upshot was uh, a wee ticking off for Damien Cronin, but not an official caution. So, Paul Burke with the chance to tie the score. 
not a bad day for goal kick and over there the pitch is a bit firmer than the, the nearer this west stand here so the foothold should be quite good Kirk then trying to pull it round but again pulled it a bit too far Gavin Hastings with the touchdown Popplewell going. Tremendous work after McBride had taken it on. Burke along the line there and nicely out. Gagan was out there as well. This is Bell going. Tremendous tackle by Damien Cronin. Chalmers behind the end goal. And that was great stuff by Ireland. They're beginning to put some bits and pieces together. That's right. The Irish now, they only say so far it's established a pattern. A bit of this stuff's going on there between the backs. That's a great miss one to Brendan Mullen. Pass a little bit high to Jonathan Bell, but he does so well. Showing his versatility and his strengths. Great running if he just held on to the ball. Saved by Craig Chalmers. And it's Ireland. Well, if ever there was a panic situation for Scotland, here's one. Damien Cronin at two. Campbell at four. And the charge down by Patrick Johns. But I think uh, Scotland will get the scrummage. See there, Fulcher got it, and it was knocked forward right enough. Ken Milne saving. And a, a loud blast. Derek Bevan. And he's uh, ticked off Peter Cloisey there. He says, uh, I think that he's already penalised him. And so he'll have to be uh, careful. Peter Cloisey, who really attacks his opposite uh, loose head, but uh, been ticked off there. No yellow card, though. Well, this is one area where Ireland would, have, would be expecting to do reasonably well, that is in the scrums. Peter Clausey, tremendously strong quantity against very much a known quantity in terms of Irish point of view in, uh, in Dave Hilton. I think he's, gonna, he's in for a rough afternoon this afternoon. Milne's throw, he held it back, but Ireland got through, they compressed well, this is Bradley again, lovely flick inside, good support work, Irish forward driving on, Popplewell there, Scotland in disarray here, and there may be a stoppage for an injury as Bradley feeds out to Burke, Danaher, O'Shea was in the line but lost possession, but it'll be offside against the Scots, Nick Popplewell has been injured, but uh, attended to and seems to be all right. There's the long kick across, and what a save by Ken Logan. Out to Chalmers, and that was great to see that bit of enterprise, and it almost produced a try. But a suspicion of knock-on, I think, by Kenny Logan, and yes, Derek Mervyn's given the scrum to Ireland five yards out. Well, this is tremendous enterprise on behalf of Ireland. They really have to come here and they're determined to throw the ball around. Now here, the new cap, uh, Big Ben Cronin of Gary Owen and Munster could be the key man. He's, hot, he's almost broken, but the scrimmage has gone down and it's a penalty. Peter Wright on the tight head side here for Scotland. Uh, and I think uh, this time... Uh, no fancy stuff, Ireland going for the three points. Well, now, the game's starting to take a little bit of shape uh, past that first frenetic 15 minutes when it was very much dominated by errors and penalties. Ireland certainly have come here to, to throw the ball around, not only in the, in the forwards or in the back, but Nick Popple featuring very strongly so far in a couple of good charges. Third time lucky, hopefully, uh, for Paul Burke. Still an awkward one for the uh, right-footed kicker. Just to the right of the post. A bit of silly shouting there, maybe, from some of the youngsters in the crowd. Buck goes up. Little flick. Got it this time. That'll give him a boost. It's three points all. They've played uh, 25 minutes of the first half. 
And Ireland have had quite a bit of pressure. Good, good throw. Wayne Wright beaten to it. Johns churning through. The Irish forwards are producing some good stuff here. Buck along the line to Danaher. It's Mullen going. Mullen for the line. It's a magnificent try. Brendan Mullen has done it before at Murrayfield. And that was a superb try. His 16th for Ireland. He is the record holder with 15 before this match. Yeah, a, a bonus line of ball. Paddy Jones taking on very well, as he's done in a couple of lines before. The Irish pack right in behind him. The key to it, Michael Bradley gets it away quickly. Paul Burke to Danaher misses out Jonathan Bell. And here, Brendan Mullen has it all to do. He's been under pressure. He's in a few, a couple of indifferent games, but now and he's proved it all. The shades of 19, 19, 1987 when he scored three magnificent tries for Ireland here. Tremendous, tremendous try for Ireland. Paul Burke then, but again the flag stayed down, so it's at eight points to three. I reckon they've about uh, seven minutes to go to half time, and it was superb running. Both Scottish centres were taken away, I think, by Jonathan Bell, because there was a clear overlap there, and Brendan Mullen felt it. The drive by Patrick Johns, of course, took the Scottish back row in. Now watch here how both the centres were caught, and uh, Kenny Logan there was left with a couple of men. Scotland have clipped the line out, taken by Campbell, nicely by Chalmers, on there to Morrison. Good way of bringing the loose forwards into it. At pace, loud blast for interference. Get your body away from the ball, I think, uh, to Peter Cloisey. Notice what a powerful fellow he is. He is a very destructive scrimmager. He's for Munster, of course, out of the young Munster club who won the All-Ireland League just a season ago, and he was a key figure in that. Gavin Hastings with that distance. 50 metres from the uh, midway line to the goal line. Bit of an angle on it and not using a plastic tee and sitting the ball down fairly low you'll notice uh, the muddy patches there as the pitch got very soft with heavy overnight rain and the ball very low indeed uh, considering the modern way of doing things gavin hastings then oh he's got it up well the roar will tell you oh that was a great kick he really struck it just like he struck the half dozen in his first international against France in 86. It's eight points to six with about five minutes to go to half time. We have a game on here. Yes, Campbell was, Campbell was pulled away and there was leaning on his shoulder as well. It was meant uh, for big Campbell. That's Ben Cronin, the new number eight for Ireland. Look at the size of him. But... Uh, you could see, oh, you could see the arms, uh, actually. I think it was Fulcher, actually, who had his arms on his shoulder. I can hardly believe that of an Irish lock forward. <laughs> I'm a little bit stunned myself, though, yeah. 494 points. And he could be the first to 500 in this game. But meanwhile, Gavin Hastings, has he pulled it round straight? Absolutely plumb. So he really is in great kicking form. His third penalty goal... Scotland in the lead by nine points to eight. Campbell. Rob Wainwright a bit unlucky with the bounce. But he recovered. The wrong arm used. You have to use the inside arm or both hands in going up for the ball at the line out. Rob Wainwright there who's leading the Scottish back and uh, in a sense is vice captain. Michael Bradley. Dummy run by everybody. Burke. Out to uh, Mullen in the line. This is O'Shea. The great chance there for the left wing bell. Very good tackle by Joyner, but he may have made it. Jonathan Bell, the scorer. And it is another great try. Lovely handling, great positioning, and determined running by the 20-year-old from Ballymena. 
Well, this really is a complete change of tactics from Ireland's last game. Michael Bradley determined to get this ball into his three-quarters hands. Brendan Mullins to Conor O'Shea. Conor O'Shea's men inside him, but he looks outside to Bell. And Bell, for, as again, showing his versatility, has all the pace to get outside Craig Joyner, who's a very repu a good reputation as a very quick player indeed. Conor O'Shea just cutting in between. You'll see Chris Joyner, and, sorry, Craig Joyner, trying to catch in vain Jonathan Bell. Suspicion of a foot and touch, but no, he stretched well for the line. Tremendous score. Now here we're seeing Jonathan Bell's try again. We can look, we got a better angle to see whether Jonathan's foot was going to go into touch or not. Craig Joyner chasing. Now, as Bill McLaren said, well, we'll give him that one, I think. <laughs> Red Bar, Chalmers. Jordan half through again. Danaher with the tackle. Pick up by Townsend. Great roar from the Scottish support here. Red back once again. Little chip kick through there by the captain. And Ken Logan was taken out. The referee decides, and it's still a try. Craig Joyner is the scorer. Completely out of the blue. The 24, 20 year old has done it. Scotland 14, Ireland 13. Yeah, we're going to see David Cronin acting like an out half. Great ball by Gavin Hastings, puts it right in beside from behind Simon Gagan. Simon tries to tackle Kenny Logan, it's, it's basically just a sprint for the line. Nobody near Craig Joyner whatsoever. Slightly out, out of the blue, but no, no less valuable for that. It was the perfect chip kick ahead. Ken Logan was taken out, but look at this, this is the right wing over on the left. That's his pace, and that's his try. His first for Scotland in his fourth international. Ken Logan, eyes on the ball, you can see he was played before he had the ball, it could have been a, a possible penalty try, although the referee maybe wasn't sure it would probably have been scored, it was there. Well, this always has been the crucial period for sides after they score, is, 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 is in terms of their own vulnerability. Scotland has certainly taken a, a bit of a stranglehold on this game now, it's going to be very much up to Ireland. Scotland will be just as vulnerable after they've scored, Gavin Hastings converts the try. Scotland lead, 16-13. Four successful goal kicks for Gavin Hastings. He's on 4.99. Radpath feeding there to Cronin. And it was the captain's kick that caused all kinds of panic stations in the Irish defence. And, well, young Joyner just caught them out. The whole of Murrayfield is going absolutely daft here because they can see that Scotland have stepped up the pace. Scotland, Scotland all round Murrayfield. But Patrick John's got his body over there, however. Great driving, Wayne Wright in the van again. He's had a tremendous match. On there to Peter Wright. He's been doing that so well for Boroughmuir this season. Offside penalty to Scotland. Well, that's absolutely crucial. Scotland have just scored the try. They sustained the initial Irish pressure from the kickoff. They've got back into the Irish half, and now they've got a penalty chance. And this is the sort of thing that wins matches. Ireland traditionally have always given away points after they've scored, as I said before, and this, is the, um, this match has been no great exception. Here we see the penalty coming up. Good drive on by Rob Wayne, out supported by Ian Morrison. Kenny Milne in there, winning the ball. Red pass to Peter Wright. Tries to take on Foley, stopped with the help of Keith Wood. So a very important moment indeed for Gavin Hastings because if he slots this, he'll become the first of the European players to top 500 points in major international matches. Michael Lina has 821, Grant Fox 645, Ugo Porta 530, A.G. Hastings this for over the 500. Trying to cut everything out of his mind except his technique and timing. And the flags are up, it just got in. He's in tremendous kicking form. Scotland leading 19 points to 13. And a new record for Gavin Hastings, over 500 points. Ken Milne may need attention for that uh, bleeding wound, but it doesn't look too serious. Again, Cronin at the front, helping. Then Campbell goes round to aid the drive. 
Scotland a lot tighter in the second half and driving through the middle they're not rolling round the side until now then they try to go Ian Morrison not sure of where the ball is but he's found it now now it's red path the drive on by Peters Peters almost there Cronin going has Cronin he scored Damien Cronin has scored his fourth try for Scotland it was a forward try from beginning to end 24 points to 13 Scotland lead they've played 23 minutes of the second half all forwards a real forward try as you say though he has a bit of a look the old experience there takes his time picks his spot stretches it and the big telescopic arm just comes out and sets the ball down second try in a row for Damien Cronin well really this is where the game was being lost and won Scotland after scoring have got back into the Irish half they've put on the pressure and they've got further points on the board whereas Ireland have scored and have lapsed in concentration Murrayfield well it's just as it's been on all the great occasions when Scotland have been going well and the youngsters their flags aloft they feel that uh, Scotland are if not home and dry, they're well on the way. Damien Cronin, who scored a try against Ireland in 89, one against Wales in 90, and a fortnight ago against Canada. And his fourth, giving Gavin Hastings this chance to convert. Well, the East Stand told you, didn't it? Gavin Hastings piling on the goal. Six goals he's kicked in this match. 176 goals for Scotland. They lead 26 points to 13. They've about 15 minutes of the match left. Well, Damien Cronin is enjoying looking at this one, I'd say, tomorrow morning. Yeah, there was no stopping him from that range. The pickup at last by Peters. On there to Redpath. Redpath to Logan. The drive on by Morrison. Again, the Scottish forwards in control of it so far and trying to drive through the middle. Loud pass for pulling them all down. Not allowed. Peter Closey at the bottom. But it's a penalty to Scotland. And this will be an interesting decision. Certainly you're not allowed to pull them all down. And of course it's so frustrating for the, maybe the lighter forwards. How do they stop bigger men from rolling on? The crowd aren't too happy about uh, Scotland deciding to have a go at the penalty. They would rather they'd run it. But this of course is uh, International Rugby 1995, Philip. As it always has been. I don't think it's changed too much, Phil, do you? <laughs> I'd have done the same myself, I think. Here we can see the lead up to the penalty. Certainly Scotland getting a bit of a forward momentum there, and I would say that the only option there for the Irish was to pull things down and stop them going over. So Gavin Hastings with 504 points from his 53 internationals now, and that's a really a, a very good strike rate indeed when compared to the others Michael Lyon strikes at 12.2 per international Grant Fox of course is best with 14 points on average Porta did 9.4 and Gavin Hastings with 9.3 before today so it's a steady strike rate and this of course could put Scotland well almost out of sight Gavin Hastings pulling it round but pulling it round too far and so it stays at 26 points to 13. I reckon they've got about nine minutes of the match left. And Paul Burke, of course, uh, with the dropout. And Ireland with this thought of they're still a long way downfield to try and uh, get away back up there again. Wainwright, who's been in commanding form, a real spearhead for the Scots. Peter Wright driving. You can tell how the Scots forwards have really got the bit between their teeth now. They've certainly got the confidence of that of that, uh, that, that, that cushion, the points cushion that they have at the minute. They're playing the, the game the way, the way they know how best, and certainly the likes of Craig Chalmers and Redpath are, domi are certainly dominating the tactics, keeping Ireland pinned back, and Ireland, it has to be said, haven't showed a great deal of composure. 
Burt with the high one. In comes Hastings. Here he turns it with interest. That's a massive boost off an awkward position. O'Shea beaten by the flight. Taken by Bell. Bell of Ballymena. Out to Gagan of Bath. Gagan high. Gavin Hastings to Ian Morrison. There's not a lot of support for them there. Gavin Hastings held his own 10 metres line. Loud blast and Scotland, uh, well, they've conceded a position there to the Irish, a penalty for going over. So the Scottish captain will be annoyed there because uh, that was a position where the ball had to be moved very quickly. And in any case, there wasn't a lot of uh, retreat support. Burke finds a good touch. So this 21-year-old uh, who's uh, just feeling his way along in his second international match, but has a lot of very good touches to him. All he needs now is experience. Great jump by Fulcher, taken there by Cloacy. Bradley waits, out to Burke, the dummy run by everybody to Danaher. Townsend has him, still inside Scotland's 22. Redpath wonders if the ball's there. And I think uh, Bradley thought that the Scots have driven past it and won the ball. And Ireland, in any case, had gone in front and over. But the contests for the ball at close quarters have been fierce from beginning to end today. It really has been a, a tough battle up there for all of them. But hear them, scare them at times. But uh, the desire to win possession is so, uh, so important and all-embracing. And Ireland will be really wondering what's gone wrong uh, up to date, Bill, because at half-time it looked like the Irish three-quarters are certainly going to cut loose and start to dominate this game. But it really has been a story of the Scottish forwards dominating. Ben Cronin got the ball in, Gagan goes, tackled by Peters, 10 metres outside Scotland's 22, handling in the ruck, or handling from the floor. Keith Wood was in there, but it's Burke. That's awkward for Danaher. Burke still gets help from McBride, Scotland's 10 metres line. Bradley once again, Mullen, nice dummy from him. That's Bell, the left wing over on the right, tackled by Cronin. Popplewell with the Breens this time, runs into Peter Wright. The blacksmith from Bonnie Rigg did his bit there and hasn't interfered with the play. Mullen going. Effort by Conor O'Shea, the fullback. Scotland's 22. No real advantage for the offside. Ireland will get the penalty. So this is rather like Ireland, as they did against England in the closing stages, stepping it up. That's right. Unfortunately, what they needed to do was step it up after they made the, the initial scores, because that's exactly what Scotland did. They got their scores, and then they lifted the, the, the game an extra level above it to, to really ram home that advantage. Five minutes to go as Wood feeds out to Cronin. Cronin, the big new cap at number eight. Still Scotland's 22, this may be a penalty to Scotland. Referee Derek Bevan waiting for advantage. Now that's great refereeing for you. That's the refereeing of a man who's just broken the world record for the number of major internationals at which he's been referee. He's 26 today and brilliant playing there of the advantage law. Fulcher changed places. But Scotland win it. The Chalmers from Red Bath. Gagan. O'Shea on to Gagan. Now he likes a bit of space. And he runs here like a mad ferret. But tackled there very well indeed by Ian Jardin. Scotland on the attack. Chipped through by Townsend. Having got the ball from Ken Logan. O'Shea was back there to save. But thinks of a quick dropout but uh, you can see here Ian Jarden feeding to Logan and then Townsend with that lovely little kick through Joyner chasing after it O'Shea 
well positioned and very cool in the crisis. Great pick up by Redpath. Super save by Jonathan Bell. Well, this little lad surely has a great future. 20 years old, his fourth international, but full of pep, burly build, difficult to stop, and sharp in ideas. Red path again. Peter Wright couldn't hold that one. It was just a bit about hip level and prop forwards like the ball in front of the belly button. And a big belly button it is too. <laughs> Ireland's 22. Again, another good bit of refereeing. Derek Bevan there. Saying to the fellas, he ticked them off early on for collapsing, and it's been reasonably good since then, but there again, it may be uh, Peter Closey with the elbow going down. A real test there for David Hilton of Bath, the 24-year-old who uh, really came through the Scotland A-side this season. Loud fast, and Scotland blamed, I think, for taking that one down. Bradley once again. Fulcher was going, that was Foley, now Bradley once more, Park Danahan, a great tackle again by Ian Jordan. Gregor Townsend couldn't quite control a very difficult ball, there was a way open there, Townsend there, who's given two little instances of that scouting acceleration of his. Yeah, because he Philip Danahan managed to get the pass away, Brenner trying to flip it on to Simon Gagan. Almost into the arms of Gregor Townsend. What a shame that Simon Gagan hasn't got more passes today. Ireland with the back row to Foley. Thrown into Foley, but not over the gain line. And so the forwards have to go back to get into the Rucker Mall. However, it's Danaher once again, O'Shea. Bell on the short ball that time. Referee saying, play on. But the advantage didn't go. Didn't go to Scotland, and so Scotland get the put in with uh, just half a minute of uh, actual playing time to go. Scotland 26, Ireland 13. It's been another very exciting match indeed. Red path to Chalmers, on there to Hastings. Gavin Hastings to the 22, out there to join out. Burke is the saviour for Ireland. Yeah, red pass coming blind, shipping it over to Craig Chalmers, who's out. That's the end of the game. He's still watching the replay after that's the end of the game. It's not a move. And the referee's whistle goes for the end of the match. And it's been a tremendously exciting match. Scotland, the winners by 26 points to 13. And Philip, really, the main factor, perhaps, the way the Scottish forward stepped it up in the second half. Very much so. The first half, the Scottish forwards were winning very little clean possession, but they certainly stepped up their, their domination, particularly in the lineouts, and I think that the Ireland selectors will be now looking, uh, counting their losses in the absence of Neil Francis, who would have made a huge difference to Ireland's fortunes there. And in a quarter of an hour's time, we'll hear from Gavin Hatings as we review the Five Nations action once again, but Scotland going second on points difference after that victory over Ireland, but England's emphatic win over France taking them clear at the top of the table and keeping them on course for the Grand Slam. England 31, France 10 here at Twickenham this afternoon. And of course...